So what this is about is the dark net. You guys might have heard or read about in the newspaper, if some of you still read those things, uh, about a local, um, I guess you could call him a businessman, who was just arrested um, for child pornography. He picked it up on the dark net, right? What you get for the dark net is anonymity. Completely anonymous. You use a special browser to enter it, and then you, let me start here, then you uh, surf. So I want to explain a little bit of how it works, where it came from, and then we'll do a demo. Um, and you have an opportunity to see how to buy stuff if you really wanted to do that. But that's not really what it was designed for. Uh, this is uh, Tor, the onion router. This is how it works. You start off, say you're Alice, you start off at your machine, at your laptop or whatever you happen to have, and you enter the um, Tor router network. Your packets bounce around in this network until finally they hit an exit node, an exit relay, and you get to the website. Well, okay. Yeah, would you please? I'm gonna have you surf a little bit too. Okay, sorry about that. So you bounce around inside the, inside the network until you finally reach an exit point, an exit relay, is what it's called, and you get to your website. Okay, go to the next one. No, uh, no. Should be. It should, should look like an onion, or like a like a. Just a second. I think we're there. Found it. Okay. Okay. What's happening to keep this anonymous is between each of these relay nodes, you have a separate key. There's an encrypted link between all of them. So that's why they call it an onion because there's layers. For anyone to break this, breaking one code doesn't do a thing for you. You have to go down through the layers until finally you hit the core. Okay, go to the next one. Okay, what this is gonna show you when the, web, when, the, when the browser comes up is the current status of relay nodes in the Tor network. And right now, it's, uh, this is not the Tor browser. This is a standard browser. Okay, so um, scroll down. Use a down arrow or something. By the way, uh, IP address, this is our current IP address right here. You just notice that because when we actually go into Tor, you'll see the IP address is something entirely different going down. All right, right over here, these little little flags, and they show the different country where the particular relay node is. Keep scrolling, this is bandwidth, and this is 6,000 relay nodes all over the world that your packet's bouncing among. Just keep on going. There are 1,000 and something exit nodes. The exit node that gets picked is pretty much at random. So in order to find out who you are, you not only have to break the code, but you have to actually track where the hell you went through all these, all these nodes. Okay, kill that. Yeah. Just uh, kill, the, kill the browser. Okay, 6,090, this is uh, a couple of days ago when I looked at this, that was the number of relay nodes and the number of, or total nodes, and the number of exits that I found. It changes all the time. If you want to uh, host a relay node, it's very simple to do and pretty safe. If you want to host an exit node, there are some considerations because you get a lot of takedown notices that are really improper. They're, they're, you know, you're not the guy who's actually accessing a particular website that's got uh, uh, copyrighted material on it. Okay, go to the next slide. Okay, here we go. Who uses this thing? These are the kind of individuals who use it who want to avoid tracking. There are two kinds of people who want to avoid, well, there's good people and bad people and maybe great people. 
There's those who are trying to connect to websites, for example, from North Korea or from Iran. This is how they would do it, it's protecting themselves. Um, there's socially sensitive communication. If you're really worried about being picked up because of maybe a disease you have or you're an abuse or rape survivor, this is, our personal, this is the kind of thing that you might want to use. And you can use this just to connect to a regular website. The government uses this to hide sensitive communication. For example, if they're trying to obtain what's called open source intelligence from, from someone out there, but they don't want to reveal their source. In other words, they're trying to protect their source. They might use Tor. Journalists use it to communicate with whistleblowers. And of course, you have criminals, drug sellers, drug users, terrorists, pedophiles, fake ID providers, arms dealers, and all the rest use it as well. So there's good and bad. There's another thing called hidden services that we'll see where users publish websites and other services without needing to reveal the location of the site. Go to the next, please. Here's how it got developed. Back in 1995, these two guys, these three, well, three guys, Goldschlag, Reed, and Paul Silverson, at the Center for High Assurance Computer System at the Naval Research Laboratory, this is a government organization, developed this. It's now open source. They open sourced it because they wanted to ensure confidence in the software. Go to the next. I started out in 91 because that's when this December 91 is when the Soviet Union collapsed. 95, ONR, the Office of Naval Research, funded, funds the Tor research. The first Tor papers were published in 96, an hour uh, a year later, when they were um, uh, describing the Onion uh, Protocol. At that point, NSA, the National Security Agency, was adrift. I worked there at the time. You would wonder how NSA would allow something to be developed. That's because they didn't know what to do about it. They had actually just finished trying to prosecute Phil Zimmerman for pretty good privacy uh, encryption code. And at the same time, they were trying to help banks protect themselves in their financial transactions. So they were torn two ways. Anyway, 96 to 2000, development of the Onion Routing and Browser commenced. 2001, DARPA and ONR development funding started and at that time, at 2001, is also when we had the terrorist attack on the World Trade Center. So you have these two forces competing with each other, and frankly, Tor won. Uh, 2005, uh, it was the end of DARPA and ONR funding, but it continued, the funding continued. Go to the next slide. SRI International has been funding it up to this year. This is actually a pass-through from the government. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, Department of State, Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor is funding it. National Science Foundation, Radio Free Asia, an anonymous ISP, the Ford Foundation, Google Summer of Code, and more than 4,300 private people are funding TOR. Go to the next. This is a picture of the federal budget. What I wanted you to see is this is uh, Department of Defense passed through from uh, SRI $876,099. That just shows you where the money goes. Follow the money and you'll see who's supporting it. It's the government. Go to the next. This is who's funded it in the past. You look at this, some of these, the Swedish International Development Corporation, some uh, anonymous uh, uh, North American non-government organization, Broadcasting Board of Government, National Science Foundation, Access Now, Google, Human Rights Watch, I don't know who that is, Shinjuro Technology, National Christian Foundation, NLNet, Naval Research Laboratory funded it up to 2010, uh, Inter, uh, Internews Europe, Electronic Frontier Foundation, DARPA and OR up to 2006, uh, and others, Bell Security Solution, Amidar Network, Enzyme, NSF via the Rice University. Okay, go to the next. Okay, so how do you get Tor? To get the browser, Windows, Mac, OS X, Linux, you just go to essentially do a search for Tor browser and this is what you'll find, Tor project, click on it and download the browser and uh, the installation is trivial and then you can run it. If you're on Android, uh, on, a, on a smartphone, here's where you go. 
If you're on a, a Mac phone of some kind or iPad, iTunes will cost you 99 cents. Go there. Next. Okay, now we're going to do a demo. Okay, this is your Tor browser. Um, it comes up like, it's just Firefox, it's been specially configured. Um, see the little onion up on the upper left hand corner right up there? Um, that little onion will flash with a little triangle if you have an outdated browser and you just download a new one. Um, go to the next one, the SI. Now, what this is doing is killing JavaScript. I'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, click this guy right here. Okay, what I wanted you to see was this was this is your exit node. This is the what it appears to be your IP address right there. So if if some website is looking at you, that's where you appear to be coming from. We're going to take a look at some of the places you can go. Um, do uh, do a search. Third page up here is a uh, uh, is a a, a web search um, uh, uh, site that does not keep track of who's who's looking for searches. Put up there. Put uh, hidden services. Hidden. H i d d e n services. Yeah. Um, right here. Uh, not no, not that one. Go down to. Uh, no, this one right here. Let's go to that one. Right here. Here? That. Uh, go back. What I'm looking for is one that's called Huge List of Hidden Services. I read it. Okay, go back. And then back. Back. <coughs> and put Huge List and read it. Huge. Yeah. And then at the end, read it. R-E-D-D-I-T. Yeah, okay. Try that. There it is. Hit this one. Can I just type in credit card and go right to the chase here? Yes, you can. I don't see it. Um, go back. I, I don't know what this is. I've never been, I've never seen this one. Try this one. This doesn't look like Kansas to me. That's really odd. All right. Um, Go up to hidden services, hidden, up to hidden services, and, and do uncensored hidden wiki. No, 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 that's not it. Go back. Go back. Give up. Yeah, give up. All right. Um, try this one. Somebody's got your number here. I guess they do. This is a feature. <laughs> okay, go back. We may not be able to complete this demo. Try that one down there. Okay, uh, scroll down. 
Um, I don't know, try that one. Okay, go back. Um, <laughs> uh, actually, um, we have, we, yeah, try, uh, try this one right here. We'll just go directly to the sailors. Now, you know, one of the things you can notice down here is that the, um, what do you call that thing at the end of the URL? <laughs> Come on, someone help me. The domain is onion. It's dot onion. These are all dot onion. Now, you want to buy, you want to buy some uh, fake money. This is a site that will allow you to do that. Um, the prices are in, uh, well, they're in bit, a bit, <laughs> What do you call it? Bit Bitcoin. Bitcoin, thank you, and Bitcoin. Right now, the market for Bitcoin is about $500 a Bitcoin, roughly. If you want to know what it is exactly, you can go to Google and just type in uh, uh, Bitcoin exchange rate, and it'll tell you. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> give, give, go back. I don't want to buy any of that crap. You're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> it's Tor. Well, it's who you are. It's the Tor browser, so I can leave it safe. OK, go to the hidden wiki, uh, the, the wiki again. <laughs> um, discount electronic goods. Oh, here we go. UK guns and ammo. That's OK. I have no longer any control over where we're going here. <laughs> OK. A lot of these, by the way, these websites are just on someone's PC. They're just a PC, so sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. If you can't connect with something, you try again later. So go back and try, um, uh, try the UK Guns and Ammo. You can buy, um, you can find websites where you can buy heroin, cocaine, anything, crack, anything you want. Um, you can buy guns here. Uh, scroll down. Um, you can buy um, all kinds of, well, one of the things you can get on here are guns with silencers, automatic weapons, um, just about any kind of weapon you want if you're willing to pay for it. That's a good question, and that is the question, is how do you how do you ensure safe delivery to your house or wherever you are, right? I don't know that, because I don't, I've never done any of this shit. And I'm not about to. So go back. Yeah, you find somebody, a mule, someone who's willing to do it, yeah. Um, well, let's see, what else do we have here we can look at? Um, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, uh, you want to you want to buy a hit? Someone is like your neighbor has irritated you a little bit. Ten thousand dollars if they're in the U.S., twelve thousand if they're overseas, in a country like Europe or Canada, something where they can get to. Um, now I don't know actually if um, uh, if that's a legitimate site. One of the questions you've got to ask yourself is. Uh, erotic 18 plus, that's, that's actually legal erotic. <laughs> erotic jailbait, that's, porn, that's, that's uh, child porn. Yeah. Okay, that's... Uh, have you seen enough of this? <laughs> huh, I'm sorry? I don't know. It's probably about the same, but I imagine free nuts is a different one. Uh, okay. Go down a little bit. Uh, Silk Road. Well, it's a Silk Road forum. 
here's a drug market for you. Um, Silk Road was taken down recently by the FBI. Silk Road 2.0 is up now. So if you want to go to Silk Road, you can find it. Um, kill, the, kill the browser and let's go back to the briefing. Okay, um, go up to file up at the top, all the way up at the top, all the way up, all the way up. What I'm trying to do is actually get to, oh, uh, all right. Uh, what I'm trying to find is where you start the briefing again. You know what? I bet if I type this, uh, you think it starts? What? Well, these are start. There you go up to the top. Up, up, up. There. File or slideshow. Oh, slide there you go. Start. Current slide. There you go. Go yes. down, down, down. Yes, 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 sir. Okay. Here we go. Further, further, further demo. Now, this is something to be aware of if you're buying crap on the dark net. The FBI took over a place called Freedom Hosting that hosted a lot of these hidden services. Um, so you don't know if that website that you're so interested in buying from is maybe an FBI website. Could be, I don't know. So also if you click on just about anything, if you have JavaScript running, you're liable to get drive-by malware. And what that drive-by malware does is phone home, right? Phones the FBI and says, this is what this guy is doing. So you have to be kind of careful, all right? Uh, the dread pirate Roberts ran Silk Road. The guy's name is uh, Ross William Ulbrich. He was captured by the FBI. He's incarcerated in Brooklyn right now, awaiting trial. He attempted a hit on a Silk Road vendor. Um, and that's one of the things he's being prosecuted for, attempted murder. All right, so you got to be careful when you're using this stuff. Uh, the FBI uh, <laughs> arrested the acting Nebraska Cyber Sur uh, Security Director, two minutes, for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Tim DeFoggy. It was recently and convicted of child pornography. That's this state he was using Tor. Presumably, he is uh, FBI is drive-by malware. Silk Road 2.0 reminds you to turn off JavaScript. Next, commercial message. This is a commercial. Venom is by me. It's a good book. You'd like it. Excellent hard science fiction. I'm serious. Buy it. It's 99 cents. What the hell, right? All right. That's all. Any questions? Thank you very much.